Now that we have very concretely established the Bible eyewitness and uh, witness position on the firmament as a solid molten looking glass affirmed all the way from creation, the flood, still there, uh, to the very end times, day of judgment, let's deal with one more thing associated with this for day two. Are the waters of heaven still there as well? Well, if they are, uh, as they are supported by the firmament, which is solid, uh, that pretty much sums this up once and for all. Does it not? Uh, I know, so many have watched sci-fi movies that, of course, show space as a concept, never in scripture, uh, that defies, you know, gravity and all of these different uh, so-called scientific theories. Uh, it's a vacuum, you know, and... and you know, there's so many things that even if you look at the space missions that don't make any sense if space is what they tell us it is. Uh, and then, of course, when they can't make things add up, they then create new uh, theories which are just manufactured, fabricated, <laughs> you know, uh, nonsense like dark matter. Now there's dark matter. No, there isn't. No one's ever found dark matter. No one's ever measured it. No one's ever tested it. No one's ever observed it. They know nothing about dark matter because it's made up in a vacuum. That's where the vacuum is in their brains uh, and not actually proven to be the case. Uh, they'll render heaven in many different ways and all are false. They usually forget the firmament. The waters of heaven, especially, hello, which we'll cover now, and most of the things Enoch and others described as eyewitnesses. Whoops. Hollywood knows little of, well, anything, really, um, when it comes to the Bible. Uh, we will also see movies where, you know, water will flow backwards, yet it does not. Uh, if there are waters in heaven, then that means there is still a foundation for those waters to sit on, period. Otherwise, they all fall to earth, and that just hasn't happened. Uh, we all know this. Uh, have your child test it. Uh, take a bucket of water. Uh, let them go to the top floor of your, your house or building and, uh, or some structure of some sort and allow them to slowly pour it and see what happens. Better yet, for those who don't think the water would fall uh, at that point, well, go ahead, stand under the bucket. Go ahead, uh, see what happens. Uh, see, Elohim created uh, basically the laws of nature and science, true science, uh, and in infrastructure, uh, you know, he has such to support such things. The firmament supports the waters above. That's just the case. He doesn't need, that's what Bible, the Bible says, so don't try to change it. He doesn't need another miracle that, well, he never says he had to perform. Uh, I mean, doesn't the Bible have enough miracles for everyone? Uh, such as heaven's water somehow being suspended in midair. Uh, why? Well, could he? Well, yeah, sure, he could. Uh, just look at the parting of the Red Sea, right? Which really was his demonstrating he's the creator, is it not? Um, so, basically, Enoch did not see such in heaven. So, no, there's no suspended waters up there. Uh, but we'll talk about what is there and what is there in the end times, even still. And this is incredible. Here we go. Genesis 1, 7, And Elohim made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Is that literal? You better believe it is. Absolutely 100%. We've covered how many scriptures now? They pretty much say that, and this video will add on even more. Uh, and it was so. The waters were one at first, right? Uh, he created the waters in Genesis 1, 2. Not before creation. We covered that already. Go back and watch if you haven't. And they were separated as they are the same water split into two now. There you go. Same water, though. Uh, we can view these waters pretty easily today. Just go look at the ocean. Uh, there is no passage that says the waters that went into heaven were transformed 
into water vapor. That is nonsense. What it says is they were separated by a hard, solid firmament that you can see through. They're still called waters above and still waters below uh, because they are all the waters, right? And we'll show you such some, some such scriptures, but that actually is incredibly well documented. We could do videos on that. Uh, today, the wa world ocean is salty because of the hydrothermal vents. Uh, in other factors, uh, you even have the flood. Uh, so you're mixing with minerals and other things uh, into the waters. But originally, this is all, I guess, what you would call holy water from heaven. Uh, it was just created uh, on the first day. Again, Genesis 1-2 is creation, not before it. And we're only on the second day now. Let's look at this word in Hebrew for waters. Ma'im. Uh, it means, well, water, right? Uh, almost every time it's used. 571 of 582 times. Yeah. Uh, and more because it has different renditions of water. Uh, but it's not water vapor ever. It's not ice either. See, the Bible has a word for ice and that's not it. It is used uh, two times uh, for urine, which is no surprise. It's watery, uh, obviously the exception, but still appropriate, really. Uh, it's waters with another word uh, a couple of times, water springs, washing, still water involved, water course, uh, still water, water flood, waterine, uh, and then there's one that's a variant. This is not a word for water vapor. It's just not. Uh, it's not a word for ice either. Uh, this is one of the most ancient words used, and it means, well, water. Uh, this is important when we get to the word heaven in the Hebrew, which has always identified with waters as well. In fact, let's go there. Genesis 1.8, and Elohim called the firmament heaven. There you go. So the firmament is heaven. That's the same word for sky. Oh, oops. You mean they're the same thing? Yeah, it's the same word. Uh, so understand, if you look up, what do you see? You see the sky and you see heaven. You see the firmament, which is in the middle, uh, which is the arch above the earth. It's clear. It's, it's strong. It's uh, molten looking glass. So, And the evening and the morning were the second day. So as it separates the waters of earth from the waters of heaven. Uh, the firmament is called heaven, or in Hebrew, uh, Samaim or Shamaim. Uh, oh, wait, uh, do you notice that word? Uh, notice what's inside of this word. At the end of it is the word water, Mayim. There you are. Hmm, how about that? It is translated as heaven heaven, sky. Oops, yes, the sky is heaven. Got that? Uh, the visible heavens, when, when Job said that the firmament was in the sky, he's saying it's in the heavens, which is the sky, and it's the um, basically the foundations, the lower part of heaven, where heaven begins, and where the sky ends, though it's still called sky, it's still called heavens, because it's all the same paradigm when you look up. The visible heavens, see, there you go, visible heavens, uh, sky, see, uh, as abode of the stars. Now they are where? Inside the firmament, so no, there is no way to separate them outside of the firmament, and, you know, the, the concept just fails when people try. Uh, there is an open firmament, yes, in Scripture, uh, where the birds fly. We've covered a scripture uh, that even said that uh, previously, uh, which is the sky where birds fly, right? But it's also called heaven at times. Why? Because it's the same word in Hebrew. Uh, and there is, and there's more than one word for it. We'll cover another, and you'll see it also means heaven, and it also means sky at the same time. It really means both, all every use, because heaven is up there, right? The sky is up. You look up, you see the sky, you see heaven, and you see the firmament. 
uh, which is there. Uh, there is then the solid firmament, which is the foundation of heaven still in the sky above. There's no separating that concept. Just look up as the visible universe. Uh, that's not actually a Bible concept or word, right? We never see the word universe. It doesn't exist in the Bible. Uh, when it does, it's been added in the English in fraud, uh, and it never belongs because it's not a concept of, of Scripture at all. The sky, atmosphere. Okay, again, atmosphere, fine, but if you want to go into the different levels of the, you know, the stratosphere, the blah, 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 fear, uh, whichever, it, it really doesn't matter uh, because all of that's fiction anyway. Um, no Scripture uses the word universe. Uh, and no scripture breaks down, you know, different levels of uh, stratosphere, etc. Uh, and they're not spheres anyway, uh, according to the Bible. Another poor adding to scripture by Bible dictionaries placating occult science. It's what we see here. Heaven as the abode of Elohim. Uh, indeed, his throne is fastened to the firmament in the sky above the earth. That's what Scripture says. It's never a question in the Bible. Shamaim, dual of an unused singular shama. Okay, now that's from an unused root, meaning to be lofty, the sky uh, as a loft, uh, the dual perhaps alluding to the visible ark in which the clouds move, as well as to the higher ether. Uh, where the celestial bodies revolve. That higher ether is the firmament. That's where they are, and there you go. Well, once again, though, whatever scholar wrote this does not actually believe the Bible because he's adding in other concepts here that don't exist. So, you know, why don't they, when they define Bible words, why don't they stick to the Bible and its use? Why would they go outside? Well, uh, at least they question it, if nothing else, right? Uh, it means they don't believe it 100%. Perhaps alluding to, what? Uh, it says that in this definition. No, the Bible very directly defines the firmament. Uh, we've shown you as an arch in the sky uh, and basically a molten looking glass you can see through. Uh, what are you looking at? Well, the sky is blue in the daytime, right? Why? You're looking at the waters of heaven, not space. Space isn't blue. Oh, ooh, how about that? Uh, which doesn't exist in scripture nor reality as no one has ever proven such. They make up theories, but they make up theories about just about everything. We will prove these waters are still there. Uh, then it says air. Okay, fine. Sky, same thing. Uh, astrologer, uh, it even has an X next to it. If you click that X on blueletterbible.org, uh, basically it is a variant spelling, uh, so not actually the same word in usage at all, um, and really probably shouldn't even be associated with this definition. Astrology, though, is a watcher fallen angel doctrine, uh, according to Enoch especially, but also scripture generally, uh, and Yahuwah doesn't use it. Ever. He has no constellations. He doesn't need them. He knows every angel by their names. And you won't find a single constellation in all of Scripture, and we're going to get there soon uh, in this series, too. Uh, that's the occult. Uh, and they're named after what? Fallen angels and Nephilim. Oh, is that what Yahuwah did? He named them after his enemies. That's stupid. And when you put them together in the sky, especially based on what science says, you know, you have a star that's millions of light years away from another star, but supposedly they connect in the same pattern. Could you be dumber? That is not in any way, shape, or form uh, a valid way to see that. And then just look at the dots. They don't connect. They don't form anything. Look at the bear. That doesn't look like a bear. <laughs> look at the lion. That doesn't look like a lion. None of those constellations look like the characters they're associating with. They're making it up. They make it up. That's not science. Now, astronomy is science, but astrology is not. However, it is the study of the stars, which are where? Well, not in space. They're in the firmament. 
So even then, still, um, it, it doesn't go that far outside, though it really shouldn't be here in this definition. Watch answers in First Enoch, and we'll get to uh, the constellation soon. Then it says, heaven, heavens. Wait, where have we heard this term, though? Lofty roof, essentially. Sky, lofty sky, lofty roof. Who used that? Where did that come from? Hmm. Ah, that's what First Enoch 89.2 called the firmament. A lofty roof. There you go. Which, he clarifies, is an enclosed system, as pictured roughly. Uh, and Enoch describes the inner earth in massive details, uh, which would be larger than what you see pictured. Uh, much of the earth, especially the firmament, which he saw, and heaven, he saw everything, essentially. Uh, you and I? Well, we have not, have we? Uh, modern occult scientists and your professor? Most certainly have not. And uh, have never produced anything to disprove the Bible. They claim it, but they lie. It's just fakery and really witchcraft. Uh, and we'll get there more later. Back to Shamaim. Brown Driver Bay Briggs also says it means heavens and it means sky. That's right. Heaven is in the sky. I know some don't seem to know that. Above and including the firmament and at times even the open firmament in application, uh, which is where the birds fly. So these terms are very clear in scripture and can't really be confused, though some try. Justinius again, caught. Uh, still inserts occult theology here into this interpretation, representing the dark ages where knowledge was lost. And see, today we are in the day of increasing knowledge uh, for many of us who are awakening, yet the church is still in the dark ages. That's just fact. Heaven from the unused sing. Wow, now that's cool. Uh, but again, matches the whole of Scripture because the heavenly bodies... Uh, in the firmament, sing, as does heaven above the firmament for that matter. Uh, can you imagine? This creation is far more precious, and occult scientism wants to take this away from us. So we can't understand it with a massive cache of lies, i.e. firmament, as we've been saying, saying, which seems to be nope, this guy didn't believe the Bible, it most certainly is as fact, period, according to the Bible. He doesn't believe it, or didn't. Uh, spread out like a vault over the... The what? The what? Does the Bible ever use the word globe? Uh, actually, not once, and not in terms of the shape of the earth. Never. Uh, he is inserting scientism. Of course, this was in, what, the, the uh, you know, couple hundred years ago. Uh, so it's no surprise that in his era, there was a lot of pressure to placate this scientism, this occult uh, knowledge, which is not knowledge at all, but nonsense. In other words, Jacinius saw the scriptures, but he changed them in his definition, and clearly by his definition, he knew better, but changed the Bible anyway to suit his paradigm. Uh, this way he wouldn't get scoffed at, I imagine. Uh, it's very sad, yet scholars still operate that way to this day. That paradigm hasn't changed in that sense. We covered this in more detail in the previous videos already, this definition. Again, this is why Job 38.7, this word for sky, Shahak in Hebrew in this case, uh, is also actually interpreted either sky or heaven because they are the same in the Bible perspective. Someone tried to claim they are different, and of course they prove illiterate yet again. They don't even know uh, what you know a Hebrew word is clearly, uh, and they don't understand that some have more than one meaning. Well, just as English words do, but they can't do any research whatsoever to find that. Job is speaking of the firmament, which is in the sky, yes, as the foundation of where heaven begins in definition. It is sky and it is heaven. The fact many don't know this 
is extremely poor in scholarship. We covered before 1 Enoch 60, verse 11, 12, where Enoch, who saw everything essentially, tells us heaven has ends and a foundation. And again, it is better still uh, that it be there because, well, what happens to all that water? What happens to the sun, moon, and stars? They come crashing to the earth, which is what happens in Isaiah and Revelation in the very end. The sun and moon are already gone, but the stars all crash to the earth uh, and better hope they're not suns right well they're not that's a lie always has been uh, and this event has not happened yet it's not something you would forget uh, in their springs waters above the firmament there you go still there uh, now that's before the flood but what about after the flood we're just setting this up now the windows of heaven poured out right well indeed uh, that with the fountains of the great deep are the cause of the flood. Did all the water pour out, though? Oddly, the word for heaven still includes waters in the word, Shamaim, as we just covered for one. Uh, and there's a reason for that. They're still there. Let's see. Second Esther's 4, 7 expresses the springs or waters are still there above the firmament. That's what it says. Uh, that's 400 B.C., long after the flood. But this is not the only witness. Let's go to Psalm again, but a different passage. 148.4 Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Yep, David recorded the waters were still there above the heavens or above the firmament in 1000 B.C., where are those waters? They aren't suspended in space. They're sitting within the firmament which supports them as the very foundation of heaven which remains. Again, we already know it remains through the end times. David did not think this concept strange at all. Many do today because the modern thinking that we're programmed into says otherwise, but it never proves it, and the Bible they ignore is the accurate record eyewitness account even it is how things were created and the, then see he believed the bible he was not ignorant modern scientism has never produced anything to actually overwhelm this fact and it has the burden to do so and it never did never has uh, because the bible has eyewitness and witness uh, accounts over thousands of years as the valid, historic, credible record. Facts. They have guesses and very poor ones. Psalm 104, 1 through 3 says, Bless Yahuwah, O my soul. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment. Not sure. How exactly some wish to ridicule our video on, uh, you know, who is the light of creation. Uh, the created light came from Yahusha, period. We prove that. Done. There is no debate there. Um, when Elohim actually wears light as a garment. See, that's how it works in heaven. Now read Revelation, Yahushua is still glowing in anointing and light, even at that point. Why is this a surprise? As well as he's the light of the world uh, since the beginning, and will be, especially we'll see it revealed, when the firmament is gone in the very end, and he is among us. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. There's that same language we keep seeing over and over in the Bible. Why is that? Because it's truth and because it's fact established and carried throughout Scripture uh, by the prophets and apostles, and they were credible. Modern science, not. Yes, a tent, curtain, above, uh, very well supported. That's no surprise to Scripture. Uh, we already showed you. What is that curtain? It is the firmament. That's what it is. Uh, and if you look at the work of Andrew Hoy, um, he actually uh, basically went through 
the dimensions as an engineer um, and figured out that the uh, dimensions given in scripture of the tabernacle are one of a dome much like the earth much like the firmament as far as the tent is concerned uh, Yahuwah was copying the same paradigm just as he lined the walls with gold he had Solomon do that because gold lines the walls of the Garden of Eden where his Holy of Holies is on earth Wow this stuff all ties folks who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters oops these are his heavenly chambers uh, and we have shown you they rest on a solid firmament as their foundation as they must which is still there because uh these chambers haven't fallen yet have they uh no and they're not suspended on water vapor are they a uh, duh no and uh ice that isn't there anymore uh, definitely not doesn't work so none of those theories make sense and look what's there in top of the firmament well the waters are on top of it so is the throne of yahuwah uh, we'll see that defined a little more specific coming up uh, still there in 1000 bc do we see yahusha correct this when he came oh he didn't do that did he no why because it's accurate uh, he affirmed it, in fact, we covered last video. Do we see Yahuwah ever correct this paradigm? Hmm. I mean, if David was just spouting ignorance here, wouldn't Yahuwah and Yahusha have corrected it? Yet they don't. What do they do? They support it. They affirm it. Ah, how about that? See, he reinforces it as well in his own words. And we've shown you. Who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. So waters as well as firmament, still there, long after the flood, some remained, not all emptied in the flood. Yes, much did, probably most, yes, but not all. We also showed you around uh, 700 BC, Isaiah 24, uh, verses 18 through 20. But this is fascinating. We, in this discussion, which we didn't cover yet, uh, see, Isaiah said, uh, on the day of judgment the windows of heaven are opened again when the foundations of the earth and heaven shake well those windows are in the firmament that's that's where they are that's what the bible says they don't still exist again suspended in space that's illiterate well if the and certainly unscientific so for someone to say it trying to placate science using something that's unscientific i mean you're just undermining the bible that's what you're doing well if the firmament is to be rolled back as a scroll as isaiah and revelation tell us where do these waters go there is no more firmament to support them once it's rolled away so first the windows of heaven are opened and what happens well the water's poor right right now there's no more firmament to support them once it's rolled away. No, this is not the flood. Don't worry. Yahuwah said he would never flood the earth again. He's not going to. We still see that rainbow, right? I mean, it's still there. So we're still good. Just look up in the sky on a rainy day, and you can just say, we're good. All good. Uh, we don't need to worry about this, um, you know, global warming causing flooding of the whole earth to the point where you know we're in water world and there's no land left or uh there was some other movie i uh, looked at recently i couldn't watch it all but uh watching a piece of it uh and they showed that all that was left of the earth was two continents uh and they were really just islands they weren't even continents the continents were all gone everything was submerged underwater and uh none of it makes any sense one of the continents looks like great britain and that really doesn't make sense because it wouldn't be high enough so i don't understand but uh, why did movies need to make sense anyway right right well they're not science so if you're getting your science for movies that's already a problem right well this won't be enough water to flood the earth though uh but the waters above the remaining firmament 
that remain there will empty out onto the earth still in the very end. Before the firmament is rolled back, the waters have to be emptied. It won't be enough to cause a complete flooding of the earth, don't worry, uh, because much of heaven's waters were emptied in the flood and formed the world ocean today, uh, which did not exist prior to the flood. Watch our rivers from Eden series. We prove that out. Understand that in Revelation also the sea disappears at one point. Uh, so if in fact these are the waters they pour uh, into the sea and the rivers, uh, they're, they're going to be gone. They're, they're not there uh, infinitely either. So uh, Now we find this detail though in 2nd Esdras and this is incredible. Check this out. 2nd Esther is 1541. We haven't covered this yet. This appears to be the time in the very last days, uh, unequivocally, uh, when this water is poured from heaven, as Isaiah says. Here's what Ezra the prophet says. Fire and hail and fleeing swords and many waters. From where? Well, Isaiah told us from the windows of heaven that are opened in the end one last time. And there'll be great storms during this time too, as Ezra, Ezra mentions earlier. Um, then the firmament is rolled back as a scroll after the waters are emptied. Uh, where do these waters then go? That all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. There you go. Uh, boom, the heavens, the, the windows of heaven Pour again. Yes. No, it's not the flood. Don't worry. But they pour again, and they are mixed with fire from heaven too. That's what Ezra's discussing here. And this dynamic also is found in Revelation. Let's go there. Revelation 4, 6. And before the throne... There was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Now that's a sea of glass. Hmm. Well, first, what is a sea? We know what a sea is, right? But we'll, we'll look at the word anyway. I mean, do we really not understand that many scholars? They don't, and they play with that word, especially whenever they want to change Scripture to their view. That's what they do all the time, and that's what they're doing, changing Scripture with interpretation, but still, that's what they're doing. So, for instance, uh, some say in Revelation 13, 1, that when it says the beast rises out of the sea, that, well, that's a sea of people. Wait a minute. What does it say? It says he rises out of the sea. Sea, sea only means sea which is water it doesn't mean sea of people unless there's a word that accompanies it that means of people which isn't there therefore that's not what it means and never could be a coherent way to interpret scripture the dumbest bible scholars use that regularly uh, and they just they, they they just fumble scripture like crazy when they do uh, now revelation 13 1 Either when the beast rises out of the sea, this is where it's used, uh, not out of a sea of people, which is, again, illiterate to add of people when it's not there. It's not found in the passage. If John meant a sea of people, he would have written a sea of people. He knows what people are. Duh. This is how they change the word. This Greek word here, Thalassa appears 92 times in the New Testament. And would you look at that? It always means sea, as in sea of water, every single time. It never means sea of people unless sea is accompanied by, uh, and, and then it becomes an analogy. Yes, but it is not an analogy in this case, other than... It's a sea of glass. So it is, what's the analogy though? Glass like unto crystal. So it looks like glass. Now that's not a surprise either. And we'll cover that word in a second. So these are waters, because that's what a sea is, right? Uh, and they look like glass, just as some term 
the sea, uh, basically on a very calm day today, they'll say it looks like glass. I grew up on the water, and the watermen would say that, in fact, that it looked like glass that day. Uh, no surprise. I think most scholars agree this is a glassy sea of water, uh, but very few seem to understand how that water stays in place because they have no mechanism for it because they did away with the firmament. See, the firmament, which is still there, holding the glassy sea, and it better be, or, well, that already fell to earth, and that didn't happen. And this word interpreted of glass, well, let's look at it quickly. That's only used three times in the Bible, meaning of glass or transparent like glass. Glassy. There you go. Uh, so, indeed, there is a sea in heaven, and it looks like glass. There you go. Now, it's not glass by this definition. It looks like it. However, why does it look like glass? Well, it's calm. No waves, indeed. No doubt about that. Uh, certainly, uh, we don't see waves in heaven anywhere. Uh, but this goes to double lengths on this. As it then says in this passage uh, in Revelation, like unto crystal, right? So these waters are clear. Uh, you can see through them. They are likely shallow for one, but pure since creation, most of all. Uh, they haven't been mixed with anything uh yet but they will be hang on uh these are not salt water and not mixed with any other elements uh we know of they're not even what we call fresh water they're even more pure than that uh you could call it holy water which would be appropriate it's in heaven before the presence of yahuwah now when you look through the waters of heaven what do you see you see the firmament which again is why you're seeing crystal invoked and why it looks like glass because the firmament looks like a molten looking glass and crystal can you imagine from that perspective what the night sky looks like wow i mean you see the sun moon and stars much closer in that perspective right so there's like a massive light show going on all night uh far greater than we see here uh, looking through the glassy sea and the firmament. That's really cool. Now, we covered Yahuwah's throne sits on the firmament. So this is also consistent as the waters are also on top of the firmament, the foundation of heaven, uh, all of heaven. Uh, the waters are still above the firmament in the first century in John's vision of the day of judgment to come. Uh, how about that? That's why Isaiah says the windows of heaven open and empty out this glassy sea, and then the firmament can be rolled back as a scroll. That's how it works, and the Bible's just so clear about this. It's incredible. In Revelation 15, 2, the angels are still standing on the sea of glass, and it is then mixed with fire. Wait a minute, that sounds like second estrus. Hmm, interesting. Fire in the waters would have to be, well, not fire as we know it. It would have to be heavenly fire, uh, which would make sense in the context of this very, uh, you know, last days here. Uh, once again, heavenly fire, consistent with prophecy throughout. So these waters of heaven are mixed with eternal fire, as, of course, regular fire is going to burn out uh, in the waters, typically, right? Uh, unless there's something to, you know, be a fuse for it, uh, if there's oil in the waters or stuff like that, but none of that's there. Uh, so this is pure water and fire is burning uh, within it, which means that it must be something different than what we call fire. Chapter 16, which happens next, is the seven bowls of wrath. Now here's an interesting thought for you. These waters poured out unto... Uh, earth and they're dried up essentially because there'll be no more sea uh, which is is all part of revelation and the seven bolts of wrath uh, even go to that point um, but the oceans turn to blood first then the rivers turn to blood 
Then the Euphrates dries up. We're not going through all six bowls, but these are just a few. Um, and not before it turns to blood, by the way. So if you think the Euphrates is drying up right now, it's not blood yet. So that's not, that's not happening. And watch our video on that. Uh, it's uh, 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 why are people Googling uh, Euphrates? Uh, and the first five bowls of wrath, of course, are poured first, and neither has been even as of yet. So none of the bowls have been poured. None of that is happening. Then in the end times, uh, in, in the seventh, I believe it is, uh, bowl. I'm doing this off the top of my head, but I think that's right. The hailstones are about something like, we measured something like, because it's in talents or whatever, but it's something like 60 plus pounds. Can you imagine a hailstone 60 pounds? And have you seen that? I, have, I mean, you wouldn't forget that. that. That would be a news report and a YouTube video that would go as viral as a video can go. Because boom, your car, right? Boom, your house, gone. <laughs> I mean, these things would be incredibly uh, impactful. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and it would be worldwide, uh, not one storm in Argentina or wherever. Uh, that's the hail Second Esther's records as well, all fitting here. So this is all tying together. Now imagine this, just food for thought. We don't know for sure on this, but when the flood occurred, seven windows uh, or water torrents according to Enoch, were opened. So seven windows of heaven. Would it not be something, since we have bowls here uh, of wrath, some you know, identify it as vials, but same thing, is something that holds water. Oh, wait, could they be in the firmament? Hmm. Now that's an interesting thought, and it's just a thought because we, we, we don't know that we have evidence to prove that, but just thought I would mention that. Uh, maybe, you know, even a different seven, uh, maybe not the same as the flood, but could be. Um, but there's probably more than seven windows there, perhaps. Uh, but wow, think about it. Not something we've ever proven out, but just a thought. We love to mention things like that. When we think of them, worthy of some brain power. Just think it out. Could it be the bowls are actually built into the firmament holding the glassy sea as well? Uh, the remaining waters of heaven, or could it be these are seven different compartments within the firmament that perhaps were already emptied out um, before and then the end times, uh, you know, punishment placed in each could be as well. Uh, that the angels then will open at, you know, one at a time, basically in order. Hmm something to think about. Now, that makes sense, but we don't have specifics, so we won't say any of that is proven. Now, let's go back to First Enoch 69. We haven't covered this before, 20 through 22, and we'll wrap this up. And through the oath, the sun and the moon complete their course. Where are they? They're in the firmament, right? So the firmament's keeping its commandment. It's keeping its course. Well, it doesn't have a course. The sun, the moon, the stars do with Ian. Uh, but the same thing. Heaven remains the same. Heaven still operates the same way it did at creation. Yes, some wonky things are going to happen in the very last days. No doubt about that. And even Enoch says that. He prophesies those things too. So it's not a, that's not something even to him uh, in his day that he didn't already know even before the flood. And do not transgress their command. So they keep their course. They do not transgress their command. Wow. Uh, now, yes, the sun and moon move, not the earth. And that has never changed in Scripture. There's no Scripture that says the earth moves. There's no Scripture that says the earth is a sphere. When it says that it's a circle, we covered that. Uh, those scholars clearly don't know what a circle is, unfortunately, and they think that a circle is a sphere. Now, a sphere can be called a circle, sure, but when you look in terms of what Isaiah used, he used the word ball uh, 20 chapters earlier, so he certainly knew what a ball was, and he didn't use that word for the shape of the earth. He called it a circle, which is a flat, two-dimensional circle, round disk, basically. From when? From the creation. Okay, so wait. So Enoch's saying the sun and moon 
stayed the same in his time from creation. From the creation, what creation? There was only one. From the creation of the world and forever. Wow. In other words, they're not going to change. Now, something's going to be introduced. Yahuwah himself is going to make changes in the very end times. And Enoch even says so. Uh, he's aware of that. He prophesies what happens uh, on the final day of judgment. So he knows they will be gone, but not until then. And they were created to keep these courses forever. Where is the sun and moon? It's inside the firmament. They don't change until the very last days. Neither does the firmament and neither do the waters above it. And through that oath, the stars complete their course. Yes, the stars move Two, the earth does not, and neither does the firmament, by the way. Someone asked that question. Uh, it's fastened to the foundations of the earth. These are running their courses within the firmament. Okay, uh, These have different courses and patterns, and we can track them. Uh, you know, star patterns can be tracked very well, uh, and the sun and the moon as well. Uh, and, and Enoch actually lays that out. We charted in Answers in First Enoch. Go watch that uh, if you haven't. It's fascinating. And they remain the same today generally. And he calls their names and they answer him. So stars, what, speak? Really? Well, according to Enoch, they are luminary angels set in the firmament to shine and to worship. Yes, they move, but they are set, established inside the firmament. That is never changed we'll get there from the creation of the world there that is again and forever got that uh, they were not created to be temporary so saying the firmament was is illiterate because they're inside of the firmament if the firmament's gone they fall we know that because that's what the bible says happens when the firmament is gone that's proven fact uh, so until, uh, of course, heaven and earth are remade on the day of judgment. Uh, that's Yahuwah stepping in and changing things uh, that were to last forever, including spirits, which he will consume, including angels, which he will consume on the day of judgment, uh, those who have fallen, those who have sinned. Um, see, the Bible concept is even man's spirit was created to live eternally. Uh, but not all will, as most will need to be consumed with eternal fire by their own choice, uh, whether they try to deny it or not. This is well known even by many uh, hedonists, for that matter. Uh, but that doesn't change. They will uh, certainly uh, pass away, and other spirits, the righteous, will live eternally. Uh, but... They were created since creation to live eternally. Their spirits were. And actually, even in the case of Adam, I mean, there's nothing saying that his body was temporary in any sense. Uh, his body, body was not meant to die. And uh, it's because of sin that brought death into the world. So, and likewise. All right, so what it's going to say next, in other words, has the same rule just specified twice uh, regarding those heavenly bodies within the firmament. Uh, now, we have the same rule. These listed will also continue their operations since creation and forever, unless interrupted by Yahuwah and Yahusha, of course, which, again, is what is prophesied to happen. The spirits of the water. See, there are angels who control the waters even in the flood, including the waters above the firmament of the winds and of all the breezes and their paths according to all the groups of the spirits. So this pattern, same for all of these, is from creation and will be forever unless interrupted by the creators, uh, which will not happen until the day of judgment period. That's what scripture says. This is confirmed in 2 Peter. We've covered, among other passages, chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 4. He says, All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Again, he's writing of what scoffers say, but he 
He doesn't dispute it because it's a truth. Again, until the creators interrupt their courses and cycles, uh, which will happen, of course. He speaks of the waters above and below the firmament then, and really the firmament as it is part of that mechanism. Then he speaks of the flood waters in verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now in the first century and same today, because he's going to tell you so, by the same word are kept in store. Elohim did not create in vain, folks. His word does not return to him or them void. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now we all know when that is. It is the future day of judgment to come. The waters of heaven are still there in Peter's time and until then. Wow. This whole topic is incredible. And something that, you know, when we learn these things and as we test them further, it just, I mean, it makes our brains explode to think that we fell for all of this modern occult science for so long. See, we can believe the Bible. The solid, clear firmament as a looking glass remains, as do its windows and the waters above left over from the flood as not all emptied out either. It will empty in the very end times, it appears, from Isaiah, uh, and then and second Esdras and Revelation. And then the stars will fall to earth once it's rolled back as a scroll. Um, never, ever suns, by the way, uh, stars, again, are luminary angels. We're going to cover that more when we get to day four. Uh, never proven to be suns, period. Uh, and the notion is utterly ridiculous, which is why they propagate it, because they want to make the Bible look ridiculous, but they make themselves look fools instead. The firmament will be rolled back as a scroll, then as it is emptied of water and all the heavenly bodies within, see, then heaven comes to earth. New Jerusalem comes down. Yahusha, Yahuwah, come down. This makes perfect sense once and for all. There is no other way to view this really because every time you try to look at it any other way you have a problem. And those trying to change the Bible claiming the firmament is water vapor or ice or uh, just you know are, are no longer uh, you know solid uh, or never were solid in the first place or all the many things they say are all wrong. Um, they're dispensing occult science, not Bible. The Bible's accurate fact from eyewitnesses. Modern occult science, well, is a bunch of bad guesses and ignorance, willingly, as Peter predicted, specifically regarding creation and the flood, and that's what we're covering here. We're not talking about um, someone working at, uh, you know, one of the big manufacturers that's inventing things. They're using real science. They're creating real things. Uh, they're inventing real things. There is something to that, no doubt. That's real science. However, these guys, these occult priests like Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, Richard Dawkins and the others that are out there, you know, preaching this doctrine of the occult constantly with this dumb stuff, uh, really, you know, yes, those are smart people uh, in the sense they are educated, they have degrees. Uh, advanced degrees even in, in most cases, but they are educated into the occult and they very stupidly ignore the most ancient, credible eyewitnesses of all these things as they stick up their middle finger to Yahuwah and Yahusha. Well, they'll learn, whether they like it or not, that Yahuwah is still on the throne. It's sad, but Yahuwah looks down from heaven through the molten looking glass at them and he sees them. He hears every word of these little cockroaches uh, who will be consumed with fire on the day of judgment, as Second Esther says, without labor by Yahusha even. Wow. So you can listen to the damned if you wish. That's your prerogative. You have free will. But we hope you will choose to listen to the word. Not us, to the word. 
as we take you back to the ancient sources and documents and even into Hebrew, and we have well proven the second day of creation. We aren't the only ones who see this or even saw this. In modern times, Rob Skiba uh, certainly did, and so sad he's no longer here. Uh, but we can all carry on this ancient credible knowledge uh, and understand these things once and for all. Now we're going to take you back in the next video to the days of Martin Luther. And this was the time of the big battle where the church, the Protestant church, was taking a stand against occult science. And we're going to see his words and see what happens there. And you got to look at it and say, wait a minute, did Martin Luther, you know, did he not realize that modern science, occult science, uh, would continue to propagate this uh, and eventually, you know, basically uh, form this whole paradigm that makes him look foolish? Of course he knew, but he didn't care because he wanted to propagate the Bible's position, which he believed was the accurate one. And that's what we're going to do, and we don't really give a crap what anybody thinks about that. We hope you will all feel the same and do the same. Thank you for joining us and watching. Y'all bless. We have over 500 videos on this channel. Wow, 500, yeah boy. Imagine that. Many just as profound, uh, with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, uh, six in Spanish to start. Uh, we also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube, well, they just forget to notify often, uh, conveniently. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. Uh, we have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Player, formerly Utreon. They've changed their name just recently. Uh, and our podcast is also available for most of our videos as well. All links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative, we have Gab and Parlor, though it was just bought out as well and hopefully will be up again soon. It's not right now, or at least not as the recording of this video, but links below. We have seven books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries, uh, and we're progressing towards our next releases very soon. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, and U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon. And it is available in hardcover or softcover color, as well as softcover black and white. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar with color maps and interior, uh, as many had requested, overseas on Amazon uh, as well. Uh, we already have that in the Philippines with color maps. Uh, but that, too, is available on Amazon in color, hardcover, or softcover and black and white soft cover if you wish. All books except Bible History Illustrated are free in ebook. And that one even is available free in animation. Uh, a video on the series where we do one video with the whole thing and we break it down into five separate videos as well. It's all there free of charge. Our content, folks, is free. Just go to OphirInstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming very soon. And check out our cool trailers next. Thank you for watching. Now always remember, prove all things for yourself. Ya bless to everyone.